The initial versions of the 6 were equipped with four-cylinder petrol engines 1.8, 125 horsepower, and 1.8 T, 150 and 180 horsepower. After modernization a 2.0-liter naturally aspirated engine, 130 horsepower, was added to them. With the latter was noted for excessive oil consumption, but 1.8-liter engines were once sent for service due to failures of the ignition coils and cooling system. After 150,000 kilometers, questions about turbocharging could arise. But these motors themselves are quite simple and resourceful, although now, given their age, everything increasingly depends on how the previous owners treated them. In any case, in terms of operating costs and repair costs, the 1.8 turbo engine is a very good option for a poor buyer. The fact is that these six engines will cost much more to maintain. For example, when replacing a timing drive, it is necessary to dismantle the front optics, bumper, and radiators. In addition to the belt on the old model, the camshaft drive chain will most likely need to be replaced, and the water pump will also need to be replaced. Against this background, a dead, lambda probe or failure of any of the sensors is not the most expensive incident, but very possible. Remember about age. Atmospheric engines 2.4. 136 to 170 horsepower, 2.8, 193 horsepower, and 3.0, 220 horsepower, are quite reliable, but may still require attention, again due to the cooling system, oil leaks, failure of phase shifters. The Force 2.7 by turbo engine, 230 to 250 horsepower, is considered less reliable, although perhaps the whole point is that it is spurred more often because it is not bought for a quiet ride. Among the original soars, it is worth noting problems with turbines. The main thing you need to know about V8 engines, which were installed on the most powerful versions, is that their cost level is appropriate and you need to be both mentally and financially prepared to purchase such equipment. I have good news for you. Now, if you are planning to buy a used car, or learn more about your car. You no longer need to search for the information you need on the internet. We have collected everything in one place for you, on the website carmi.pro. Here you can find out everything about the car, what brakes and at what mileage, any problems with engines, chassis or gearboxes, which trim levels are better not to mess with and how not to lose money buying a used car. You will learn all this on carmi.pro. It's a similar story with diesel engines. Yes, the 2.5 TDI V6 pleases with traction, 150 to 180 horsepower and 310 to 370 newton meters. But it is structurally complex, expensive to maintain and repair, and not so reliable. The rapid wear of rockers in the timing belt and the short-lived VP44 fuel pump have long become the talk of the town and the service life of the cylinder piston group is not considered a record. In general, the 2.5 TDI did not pretend to be a resourceful and reliable one before, and with age, there are probably even fewer, living, engines left. You can take them, but only after a thorough diagnosis and from a caring owner. In this case, it is better to look for copies after 2003 with an improved timing. The alternative is version 1.9 TDI. Until 2001, the weakest 110 horsepower version had a distributed injection system, but all other modifications were equipped with pump injectors. The engines are considered reliable, but now the question is the mileage and the condition of the hardware. The main problems usually relate to pump injectors and wear of their camshaft. There are also questions about the operation of turbocharging, but in general, there are enough specialists and spare parts, including used ones, so no problems are expected with maintenance and repair. A manual gearbox is simpler and cheaper, although do not forget that powerful versions use an expensive dual-mass flywheel. The classic ZF automatic transmission was used on all-wheel drive vehicles. It is considered reliable, but again a lot depends on driving style and maintenance. The gearbox does not like dirty oil and frisky driving overheating and torque converter malfunctions are not such a rare occurrence for it. And taking into account age and mileage, 
the likelihood of problems only increases. However, a much riskier option for purchase is the Multitronic Variator, which was offered on cars with front-wheel drive. Here, problems are possible both with the electronic control unit, which is located inside the box and suffers from overheating, and with the valve body. An aggressive driving style and increased loads can easily reduce the service life of pulleys and belts to 100 to 150,000 kilometers, and replacing them is not a cheap pleasure. In general, if you take Multitronic, then only after a thorough diagnosis and with minimal mileage. Quattro all-wheel drive is real. Full-time all-wheel drive with a Taurus and limited slip mechanical differential is efficient and durable, unless you intentionally kill it. But as practice shows, problems with transmission units do not arise even on the oldest and well-traveled cars. By the way, while all-wheel drive cars have a multi-link at the rear, single-wheel drive cars have a simpler suspension with fewer parts. But this is not particularly important. The rear suspension of the C5 is quite durable. But the front one is much more delicate, despite the fact that there are four levers on each wheel. It is clear that there is little left of the factory parts. Now the service life of the levers depends on the quality of the spare parts used. The Allroad Quattro used air suspension and it has had its share of problems with age, so it's important to make sure it's in good working order. However, it may turn out that it has long been replaced with a spring when the solution is also practiced. A well-assembled galvanized body can remain in good condition for a very long time, but only with basic care. The absence of mudguards leads to sandblasting of the lower part of the front fenders and sills. Unhealed, chips eventually develop into pockets of corrosion. There are a lot of rusty sixes on our roads. In general, everything is in the hands of the owner. Fortunately, by modern standards, the body is not very complicated and expensive to repair. The interior is assembled from expensive and high-quality materials, which retain their good appearance for a long time and age very slowly so that for a careful owner, the interior may well look like new. It's a pity that electrical equipment does not have such longevity, but the A6 has plenty of it, especially in expensive versions. If 10 years ago it was possible to list the most well-known sores, now let's simply say, before purchasing, check the operation of all systems and bells and whistles, and do not forget about the banal windshield wipers, According to the glorious tradition of the entire VAG concern, the trappist periodically turns sour, window lifters, plastic guides break, climate control, everything is here, from a buggy, control unit to the lack of freon due to a leak in the system.